look familiar. You haven't interviewed me before? No. Huh, okay. No. Oh, how's your day going? <laughs> we got rocking, dude. <laughs> this is like, this is... We are rocking. I'm, I'm at a Wizard Comic Con today, so how are you doing with all the fans? This has been awesome. I mean, uh, right from the get-go, like, you know, last night or yesterday afternoon, uh, I can't believe how many, you know, Muppet fans, Muppet Baby fans, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fans, Nancy fans, you know, we've got. Uh, like, last night, it was it was insane. We did a, we did a uh, talk. I did a talk about me and Jim Henson uh, at one of the exhibit halls here. And it was like totally sold out. I mean, I know it's like a free ticket or something, you know, but I mean, there wasn't any room at all. And uh, people have been so gracious and so cool. It's uh, it's it's really really nice. This is the first time I've ever done uh, Tulsa. Never been to Tulsa. This is my first time covering this event here. So it's a first for both of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any? Uh, how did you actually get into this? Get into which? Uh, like cartooning, drawing. Oh well, I I started out in the '70s working for Weekly Reader. And, uh, and then I was discovered by Mort Walker, the creator of Beetle Bailey and High and Lois. Mort saw my work and suggested uh, to King Features that they call me when King Features was working with Jim Henson trying to develop a comic strip based on The Muppet Show. And then I became that guy. Uh, I was 24 years old and I became the guy writing and drawing The Muppets comic strip all over the world, like overnight. And uh, I wasn't an overnight sensation or anything. You know, I've been drawing and, uh, and actually being published since I was 14. Um, but certainly, you know, having the Muppets was absolutely huge. Jim was an awesome guy. He was great to me. Comics were very important to him. And the comic strip was a pet project of his. So he worked on every aspect of it. He was really involved in it. And uh, we had an awesome run. And during that time, I was a guy that did most of the Muppet like merchandise and stuff too. I was one of the guys that Jim asked to create the Muppet Babies. I worked on Fraggles, all that kind of stuff. So well, like when toys actually come out, do they get to keep, do you get one of each for yourself? Yeah, but you know what? You know what? I don't hardly have any of them anymore because, uh, you know, they'd send me like a dozen of whatever, you know. And I'd hand them out for Christmas presents and Halloween presents and stuff and birthday presents for the kids and stuff. So it's really, really funny because I actually don't have a lot of the stuff that I did, you know. Um, got, got some of the original art, but yeah, all that toys, all the toys that are worth so much now. You gave it all away. <laughs> pretty much. Um, some of it... Uh, some of it is still around. We have a we have an exhibit of my work in Missouri at the Walt Disney Hometown Museum in Marceline, where he grew up, and they've got a bunch of my Muppet stuff there. And so yeah, so the so the metal lunchbox of Muppet Babies is there. I mean, I do have that. I have that. I have a few things. <clears throat> now, uh, do you have any projects that you're trying to like you just announced or you signed? You can say or talk about. Well, uh, well, of course, I'm. You know, I've. Uh, it's 20 years now. I've been writing and drawing the Nancy Comics strip, and uh, and we're we're on tour right now with a with a brand new program that I'm doing called of Muppets and Men, which we debuted here last night. Where uh, I'm draw I drew the characters and talked about stories about me and Jim and Frank and Dave and you know all the guys from my old Muppet days. Uh, and as far as a project, we actually are in uh, in development uh, for a show where uh, I'm going to draw on air and uh, oh, like show you how to do it. Sketch and stuff? Yeah, that's going to be like cable, regular TV, TV. Regular TV. I like that. Yeah. What, uh, PBS maybe? Yeah. yeah. Could be. All right. Uh, like, what was some of the comics back in like 80s or 90s? Like, oh, hey, I wish I could have been a part of that. Like, uh, you know what? None. None. So good. None. Because anything, every dream I ever had came true. I have look. No, there's, there's nothing. I worked on uh, uh, in 1990. Ted Turner got in touch with me to work on Tom and Jerry. Um, I. Uh, uh, Eastman and Laird reached out to me to work on Turtles. Uh, you know, I've worked on, you know, Bugs Bunny, Tom and Jerry, you know, all the Looney Tunes guys, Disney guys. Uh, dude, I'm good. 
totally good. There's nothing uh, that nothing that I said. Oh, you know, I wish I, was, you know, even in my childhood. Now, I mean, maybe uh, it would have been maybe fun to work on like Mighty Mouse or you know or Woody Woodpecker from when I was a little boy, you know. But honestly, I've gotten to do pretty much everything, and even a lot of those characters that I didn't have a long run on, you know, I would. People reached out to me that owned it, whether it was Universal or whoever, you know, and said, hey, could you create model sheets or merchandising and stuff like that? So even those characters, I wound up drawing them for money at one time or another in my life. Oh, this is one thing. Um, does, how does royalties work? Uh, like, you draw it once, or does it still continue for you? Like, uh, it, 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 It's always a one-off. Um, it's always a one-off, and it's the deals that you make when you make them. Um, you know, uh, you have royalty deals on books and stuff. You know, my deal with Nancy is completely differently structured than my deal was with, with Muppets. Now, a lot of times you do things that are work for hire. And work for hire is not a horrible thing. You just make sure that you price yourself where you feel comfortable in not, in, 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 in not having any rights to that artwork that you just did. Just make sure, but a lot of times how you'll structure things too is, okay, so I'll tell you a story about, okay, there used to, there was a comic, uh, there, was a, there was a television show on ABC for a little while in the 80s called Cowboys of Moon Mesa. Okay. Okay. I don't know how many years it was on, it was like a year or two. And they were mutated cows that rode horses, it was like a western thing. And anyway, um, they had reached out to me, and I we did a bunch of, of, of coloring books for them, and I did full color paintings for the covers, right? But there, and the deal was um, that these were for coloring books. So when the show became popular, they wanted to use the artwork that I had done for notebook covers for Dodd Mead, and also I think for thermoses and stuff like that. You know, different things, right? And so they had to come back to me and say, hi, we would like to purchase that artwork again for that. So that was a deal that we had made, that you could only use it for a certain product, and if you wanted to use it on another product. So anybody that's aspiring out there that's looking you know, for you know, how to do this, you know, always think about that, okay? Or that make sure you, it's in writing. Yeah, oh, always in writing. And uh, always in writing, um, and and be sure that you spell out what is the usage of this. Okay, like if you do a if if you do a a CD for some rock band friend of yours. Okay, and you charge them you know 500 bucks. Okay, and then later on you find out that they're putting it on T-shirts and every other thing. You know, then you should get something. Okay, because you, but but no, not if you didn't negotiate that first, okay? So it's up to you, it's up to you. And I'm not one of these guys that says, oh, you know, the world is a horrible place and everybody's out to get me and this and that. No, no, you go get what you want. You know, God will provide, okay? But you have to be proactive and you have to think, if you didn't do your homework and you did artwork for somebody, don't go griping that they took advantage of you. No, they did not. They did their homework and you did not. Okay? Just because you're a good artist or a good writer or anything, doesn't give, it's not open season on, you know, you can go after people that stole your stuff. They didn't steal your stuff. You didn't ask to protect it. Most people are cool. Yes, there are bad people out there, okay? But I've worked with wonderful people. I've also had very, very tough negotiations. I've worked with every major that Out, there is. I've worked with all stuff. of them. I've worked, you know, with, with Disney, with everybody, okay? I've worked with everybody, okay? And everybody has different deals, okay? But, so it's up to you to do the homework, to know what you can get and what, you're, what you want to do. And you know what? Sometimes it's okay to walk away from a deal. It's okay. You know, you'll get another one, if you're good. <laughs> It seems like you've had a lot of success. You're very happy with everything. Um, how do people get a hold of you? Facebook, Twitter, websites? Oh, uh, yeah, all of that. Okay, yeah, Guy Gilchrist everywhere on all of that stuff. Um, and, um, and and you can uh, you can find out what's going on uh, at nancyandsluggo.com. Just spell out Nancy and Sluggo, 
www.ethanfieldcoaching.com and, um, uh, and you can reach out to me there if you're interested in having me come and speak at a college or a university or a, a museum or a school or whatever uh, about all of this sort of stuff. I do it all the time. You can reach out to me there and I answer all my own email. Is there a Facebook or YouTube people can check out? Uh, yeah, Guy Gilchrist Music is the, face, is the, is the, uh, the YouTube, Guy Gilchrist Music. I live in Nashville. I'm a songwriter as well. So, uh, and you can find me on Facebook, uh, Guy Gilchrist. I'm on Instagram, uh, on Twitter, all of that. Yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure, man. Very nice.